Statistically speaking, most of you are not subscribed to me. Now don't worry, I'm not selling out just yet, but those of you that are not subscribed to me might not know that I am a big fan of great apes. Now what is a great ape's favorite food? Yes, that is of course bananas. And where do bananas come from? They come from banana republics. No, not that one. That one. Hey mateys, you all saw the intro, you know what we're doing, let's get to it. As always, the rules of the challenge are in the description, but if you don't want to look at it, I'll just explain them real quick. Basically, I want to become the number one exporter of fruit in the world, and I would also like to have laws such as presidential republic and autocracy at the same time, and also no labor laws at all. Try to form the closest to a banana republic as I can. Also, there was a very interesting comment I got on one of my recent videos where someone was talking about how they'd like to see an, ag an agrarianism play through as like Egypt or something where you just instead of doing you know a millionth video where it's just you know industry and then conquest and reform this empire or something you actually like do like agrarian stuff which you know kind of unique I'm not sure how interesting it would be but that's kind of what we're gonna go for here as well another thing that we are currently playing on update 1.2 this is the big one a lot of new stuff a lot of it is with the ui and just user interface there's a lot more data available to the player from what i understand i haven't played with this yet at all i haven't tested this at all so i'm kind of going into this blind i did read the updates on steam i did read the uh, patch notes so i've got a little bit of an idea what i'm getting into but not a huge idea I am a big fan of the uh, of the rebindable keys, which they made a thing. I've already updated all of them. That is something I'm very excited about. And also this message settings. I'm not gonna get a million pop-ups in the front of the screen every anymore. I'm so excited about that too. But with that out of the way, let's, let's get into the actual video. We currently have interventionism as the economic law, which is amazing. It's my favorite one. However, just, you know, for the purposes of this game, we're going to be switching to agrarianism. Not because it's better, but because it's more of a meme. This, this hurts a lot. For research, I'm going to get started with the atmospheric engine, and then mechanized tools, then railways, then wire tube boilers, so that I can get railways and I can build more banana plantations, obviously. Then intensive agriculture, really not going to be doing any war stuff, like, at all. So I'm not going to really, pretty much just going to ignore that. And I do want to get stock exchange as well, so we can get more trade route competitiveness which it's kind of a weird stat. I'm not 100% sure how it works because if you hover over it with the tooltip, it just says how competitive it is, but doesn't say what it legitimately does. Well, if someone can explain to me in the comments, that would be really, really helpful. It also makes them cheaper for bureaucracy, so that's going to be very helpful. Before I get out of the research tab, I want to mention that uh, this, this new system, you can actually have a queue here if you hold down shift and then click another one, just like that, and it'll research it directly afterwards. I don't think I'm going to use that, but it's a, it's, it's a pretty cool feature. I think this new setup is kind of ugly if I'm being honest, but you know what, I guess it's easier for some people to understand. Also the big thing in this update is obviously the private construction is now a thing. I don't really know how it works, so I'm kind of going to find out with you. Currently I don't, I'm not really making any money at all, and I believe with interventionism it's 50% of the investment pool goes to public construction and then 50% to private, same with agrarianism it looks like. So. It looks like I'm only gonna get to use half of the investment pool at any given time. So I don't think I'm gonna be constructing anything immediately, but we'll see how it goes. I'm actually pretty excited to play with this. This is this is neat because there's a lot of a lot of bugs in this game that have been fixed and everything, and I'm I'm actually kind of excited for it. You know, I say excited for it, like I didn't just do a whole playthrough as a Central American states and then mess up and now I'm doing this instead. This isn't fun anymore. I'm not having fun. I don't like this. I have no loyalists. I don't know why. I hate this. I hate this so much. What? This isn't fun anymore. This is a video game that isn't fun anymore. So in terms of where Cuba starts off specifically, um, I believe we have iron and we have coal, which means we can make steel, which means we can make engines, which means we can make railways, which means we can expand. That was four steps. Uh, we have pretty much everything we need. We can pretty much be completely self-sufficient. So we have those two major resources. We have literally no industry at all. So that kind of sucks. However, we are part of the Spanish market, which is very, very helpful because they produce stuff that we don't. To form a banana republic, we will have to start uh, building banana plantations. I'll do that right now. I'm going to build any construction sectors yet because if you don't build any, then construction won't cost anything and you'll still have five. So it's going to take forever for this to actually construct. 
However, we won't have to pay for it because we don't really have the money to pay for it at the moment. Kind of a little bit strange that the entirety of Cuba is one state, but then Washington DC is also a state. I feel like that's a bit, that ain't, that ain't right. <laughs> okay, that was, that was immediate. We immediately have agrarianism. Okay, that's uh, it's kind of neat. My income shot up dramatically. I'm not sure what that's about. You know, we've got a lot of a lot of funds here in the investment pool, but we haven't had a single private building be constructed yet, so I'm not sure what that's about. From the map right now, it looks like the biggest consumers of fruit are India, the Chinese, and the British, which is probably just because they have large populations. So that's who I'm going to start exporting my fruit to. If it were historically accurate, I might start exporting it to the American market. However, this doesn't work. I believe they have reworked how trade routes work. So basically, if I remember right from the notes, basically, if it's cheaper in your market than it is in their market, then it'll export more is, for, is what I think it is from how I understand it. I would like to eventually get a militarized police force, however, that's not quite available yet. So I think I'm gonna settle for a dedicated police force. As you can see right here, fruit is very cheap in our market. So our trade routes are expanding. I believe how it worked beforehand is it just took sell, sell orders and buy orders is how I think it worked beforehand. Is there any private construction yet? Nope. Actually, never mind that. That'll be too expensive. You know, this is very, very tempting. However, I think for the Banana Republic, we're going to want to have debt slavery. Well, I mean, not want to, but I think to make it to make it a banana republic, that might make sense. I, I am going to go for a slavery ban right now, though. Since we're going to be keeping the landowners in the government, we should be able to get that back at some point. Well, to be fair, it is it is pretty awful. It sounds awful. Yikes, never mind. Going to be a revolution if I do that. And I very much want to avoid that. So it's been about two in-game years, and I still haven't had a single private construction, like, building actually happen. I don't, I don't know how. It doesn't tell me how to like activate it or if it's all just RNG. Maybe I'm just really, really unlucky. Maybe that's what it is, but I'm really not sure. Well, here's the theory. It might be that everyone in my country is poor right now and they don't have enough money to build stuff on their own. That, that might be it. I do quite like that there is a convoys thing here. That's pretty helpful. Well, for a second there, I started, I started, you know, building some industry shipyards, tooling workshops, paper mills, whatever, getting a good foundation, trying to build a functional economy and then I, I forgot what I was doing is what I really did. I forgot what I was doing and what I should be doing is building a banana republic. Suppress the industrialists and suppress the trade unions too. Only for some reason there's nobody that wants to enact an autocracy. I think it's because the current leader of the landowners is a moderate so he has no stances. Usually they would, the landowners would support the autocracy and no one supports oligarchy except apparently the industrialists which is weird el presidente will get his throne eventually you know just just one tooling workshop won't be bad currently we are part of the spanish market and there's a lot of demand for for stuff just everything if i'm being honest time to get back to what we were doing yep more 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 that'll be good for now All right, I'm biting the bullet. I got a good bit of gold reserves. I'm going to start with a construction sector. Oh my God, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is, there is private construction happening. Capitalists investing in logging camps in Cuba. It says logging camps, but it's creating coffee plantations. That's weird, but that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That might, that might interfere with my plans though, since... You know, the AI, the people in my country may not be as smart as I am and might might use up all my arable land that I could be using for bananas and start using them for, like, food or something. You know, I think this might be a glitch since, it's, you know, the update just released, but it doesn't show me how long it's going to take for until this, uh, this building is going to be constructed. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but it doesn't say that for any of them. So, uh, I really, really liked that being there. It was really, really helpful.
Racial segregation sounds like a Banana Republic thing. I'm gonna do that. Being the subject of another nation, you know, not the greatest thing ever. However, it does put me in a market with other people with an AI, which means I can get like a lot of stuff without, without making it myself. Okay, banana plantations are being constructed. I retract my previous statement. The AI is so smart. You know, the, the private construction thing is seriously pretty cool. However, the fact that I can't use 100% of my investment pool at one time, it does, it does, I, I don't like that that much. Let the banana plantations begin construction. Oh, and we have racial segregation. That's, that's awful. What is this, a navy? No. No Navy in El Presidente's Republic. I ain't gonna lie, guys. I am... I'm really enjoying not having a million pop-ups right here all the time. It's really great. You know, I really wanted to move over to no schools because I thought it would be funny for the, for the Banana Republic. Apparently, it's impossible. Apparently, it turns out nobody supports having no schools. That's... that's shocking. Hmm, the industrialists are producing some industry. Allow it. Allow it. Just a little bit. You know, it's food industries. I guess that works for the Banana Republic, producing food or whatever. I said no industry, but I am going to have to get steel mills and, and motor industries so I can improve the infrastructure. That's just, that's just a necessity. It's just part of the game. Shockingly, investing almost entirely in banana plantations is actually making our GDP go up pretty significantly. Egalitarianism in El Presidente's Republic? No. Nationalism. The aristocrats are getting another banana plantation. This is this is a good sign. So currently, it's telling me that the trade route with China, where I'm exporting fruit, is productive, but it's not it's not upgrading itself. I'm not sure why. Because it's it's really expensive in China. It's very cheap in Cuba. Not sure why. Oh, you know what it might be? It might be the lack of convoys. Okay, that would actually make sense. Apparently we don't have enough construction for the investment pool. That's wonder how that works. So it doesn't construct it privately, it uses public construction. That's interesting. So I think I need to start constructing more construction sectors. More bananas. Currently a 1.4% chance to ban slavery. My stipulation earlier that I wasn't going to be able to grow because of a lack of convoys appears to be correct. You know, when you're doing an agrarianism playthrough and you're focusing completely on one item, you, there's not a whole lot out there that you really need to research. There's only like one thing over here that's going to unlock anything different for my banana plantations. It's going to be automatic irrigation. So currently, because we are a puppet of Spain, we are currently giving away 330 of our convoys so that's 75 percent of our convoys to spain so that's pretty awful for the whole idea that we're trying to go for so we are probably gonna want to try to get independence at some point and they have reworked the ai in the recent update so the ai is a lot more confident in the stuff it does it looks like they're expanding their the amount of ships that they have so that could be an issue that means they're expanding their military which means things are going right for them which is a problem for me look at how many checkpoints there have been for ban slave two three four five nine ten eleven i've tried to do this 11 times and it's gone down to zero it's ridiculous i'm not gonna lie to all of you not being able to build industry freaking sucks this sucks. uh it's going well though it's going well it's just every single bone in my body wants to stop what i'm doing and start building a functional economy thankfully it does look like the private construction is actually building a little bit of a functioning economy. It looks like they're building a furniture manufacturing here and then like glass works over there. But all I can build is resources and agriculture. So I also started exporting sugar to the Austrians and the Prussians. And that's tying up a lot of my convoys right now. I'm thinking if I delete one of these, this one, then this should make my actual fruit exports go up. It looks like it's not going to work because I have tariffs right now, despite the fact that it's on export focus. So that's unfortunate. So actually, I 
just bleed that whole trade route for, for nothing. It looks like there's not a single productive place for me to export fruit to, as it turns out. I did say that I would also be doing like an agrarianism kind of thing where I'd also be producing a lot of food. So I guess I could start with food industries because as, as, as I just showed you, the banana plantations really aren't profitable at all. So I, I don't think I can really go with that anymore. Hey, look, the fruit export to China has actually gone up a level. That's that's really cool. You know, there's really not a whole lot to record right now. Since I'm just focusing on the economy, I, I wouldn't really do any conquest with this. Can't really... It's not a whole lot to show. It's just kind of waiting for this queue to empty out. I mean, I can go over the general plan, but I mean, I can only do that so many times before it gets bored. Even as much as I love the idea of a banana empire as a banana instead of a banana republic, just think about that for a minute. Somebody, a few people have mentioned that in the comments. I might do that in a future video. Just saying. But as much as I would like to have a banana empire, I said I wouldn't. And I'm not. Apparently. I have quadrupled the GDP since I started, though. That's pretty. That's a pretty significant uh, accomplishment, I guess. You know, I'm thinking for a future video, here's an idea. Since they now have... Um, since they now have private construction, you could do like a laissez-faire United States sort of thing. That might be a little bit more interesting than the one state, Cuba. It would, might make more sense to do that as like the United States. I don't know. Leave a comment. See, I'll, I'll see how, how popular that is with the, uh, the viewers. Our president is taking absolutely forever to die or get out of office because I really want a different guy in here so I can start enacting autocracy. One of the ideas I have is if I do an autocracy, then I can make the president a general. And then if that general has the explorer trait, which hopefully he does, but I can just kind of reroll into the works. And then I can send him on an expedition to go map out the American frontier, or go to the Congo River. I think that would be pretty cool. You know, the president spending all the country's money to go exploring in Africa or something like that. You know what I said? No industry, only resources and uh, only resources. Get rid of the industry, get rid of the industry. But when I say no industry, I mean no industry that isn't funny or, you know, just I have to have it, such as motor industries. You have to have motor industries in this game or else you'll run out of infrastructure. That's just how the game works. And uh, guns, they are technically an industry, so I shouldn't be allowed to buy them or build them. However, guns in El Presidente's country are going to be very, very useful, I think. Debt slavery. That sounds like something that will happen in El Presidente's country. El Presidente's Cuba. I'm gonna enact that. It's a horrible thing, but nothing else to say to that. <laughs> Apparently, I think this is from the construction, from the private construction, but there's three new railways. Or there's two more railways. I only built one. That's, that's super cool, actually. That means that if it's profitable, then the private people might actually start building railways for infrastructure, which means that I won't have to, which possibly game-changing right there <laughs> so okay hear me out okay we want to have as low labor rights as humanly possible all right and the lowest you can go in this game is serfdom so i think i'm thinking serfdom in el presidente's republic there might be a revolution soon but it won't stop el presidente from getting from selling his bananas and making his money so he can buy his mansions massive update guys the fruit Export route has gone up another level. I'm currently exporting 33 bananas to China. You know, I didn't really like the construction, the private construction all that much at first. I thought I was going to mess up a few things, but you know, now I played around with it for a little bit. It's really awesome and it's really useful, especially right now when I can't build industries. So my people are actually going to do it for me. I have to completely rely on them to actually build a functioning economy for me, living it all up to RNG. So other than novelty, you know, it's actually pretty useful. It is showing that the, the banana plantations are still profitable, so I will construct a few more. And it looks like I won't need any convoys to export it to the French market, where it will be productive. I assume that's because it's connected to the Spanish market here, so that's why I won't need any convoys. You know, I am sitting on an island over here, but you know, things that the... That paradox isn't patched yet? I'm all for that. We now have serfdom. As it turns out, as soon as I made that trade route with, with France, my uh, 
trade route with Austria went down all the way, and my trade route with the Chinese went down all the way. Yikes. Not sure how that works. You know what? That just frees up more convoys for me to export bananas with. Just gotta find a few buyers first. Let's see. How can we make this country worse? Secret police. Big fan of that one. I would very much like to get pump jack, so I'm gonna start with dynamite. Does that make sense? El Presidente Secret Police Force has been formed. Uh oh. Okay, the the overlords are having a bit of a rough time. Um, I am still a puppet of these ones. Oh, so that means that if these guys fall, which it looks like they are, then I won't be a puppet anymore. I think. Okay, root for the enemy. You know, that is great, you know, economic independence and everything. However, we are losing a very large market of our customers at the moment. So now that the, uh, the Spanish have been reduced a little bit, they no longer have an interest in the Chinese, so I cannot continue to export fruit to them. So, as you can see here, the fruit market has uh, completely collapsed. Apparently the Cubans living here are consuming an enormous amount of fruit, though. That's kind of that's kind of neat. If I'm being honest, they're consuming half of my production, and my production is a lot. Since the Spanish have left, it looks like bananas are one of the only things left that are actually still profitable. And there we go. Spain annexes Spain, and we are still a puppet. Okay, so it seems that we have just just gotten a new a new overlord is all. You go, United States. You've almost reached the other end of the continent. You're so close. You know, I think Havana still kind of looks like that today. There's currently a train driving right through the, uh, the city. I should have hit record a little bit sooner. That was kind of neat. I don't think they were expecting you to stare at this so, so long. So the train actually just went off the tracks and just went right through the city. Start selling the nanners again to the French and the, the British too. Why not? Um, the Dutch doesn't require any convoys. The Chinese, why not? Now, it looks like almost all of my trade routes are starting to auto upgrade themselves and I spoke too soon. Oh, all of them went up for a second. Let's see if it stays that way. They all went back down. They're going to keep doing that. Yep, it's doing a bit of a roller coaster right now. So it's they'll reach a higher a higher level and it looks like it like still can't sustain itself or something, but it looks like the productivity the productivity is going like, down a little bit, but my profits are going up pretty pretty significantly. I have concluded that it is pretty much impossible for me to become the number one exporter of fruit with the systems of the game. I can only really export so much and I can only really build so much. So with one province without being able to conquer anything, I think that's going to be kind of impossible. So whilst we are not the number one producer of fruit worldwide, we are number number five, it looks like. So that's, that's pretty decent. And I would say we have pretty much formed a banana republic you still have landed voting which you know it's not autocracy but you know what that's that's close enough i think we have racial segregation we have a secret police we have serfdom we also have censorship debt slavery agrarianism and the lowest amount of schooling i can physically uh do and throughout this entire playthrough the president has been the same person the entire time and he's a demagogue as well so I'd say a successful Banana Republic has been formed. And my review of update 1.2 of this game, it's pretty cool. I think it's going to be pretty cool for sort of laissez-faire sort of things. So like United States laissez-faire, trying to not intervene, having as much, you know, private construction as possible. I think that'll be pretty cool. I'll probably do a video on that in the future. Or do not, I don't care about that. But yeah, big fan of this thing. This is amazing so much less event span that is great so if there's one thing you can take away from this video it's don't play as the central american states ever so yeah that's it this is a bit of a shorter video there's you know there's only so much you can really do so i hope you all have enjoyed the video so if you did please like if you liked and also leave a comment if you really really want to tell me what challenges you want to see me do next, hopefully ones that are unrelated to this one so I don't embarrass myself again. If you're feeling especially fanatic about El Presidente and his rule, you can even consider subscribing. 
But other than that, that's going to be pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.